Pastor Jason here with a daily Devo video for you. And uh, if you are liking these videos, by all means, uh, give us a thumbs up. Go to our YouTube channel that, uh, that you'll see. Uh, go to our YouTube channel, subscribe to the channel, ring the bell, and then you'll get the notifications that uh, these videos have posted and I won't have to tell you. But then uh, the reason why we do these videos, just to clarify, is because um, faith comes by hearing and hearing from the Word of God. That as we dive into God's Word, um, we come to a deeper understanding of who He is, of the life that He's called us to live, and then we can walk by a deeper uh, faith and, and, and walk by His Spirit and, uh, and walk in a full awareness of who He is as Lord, as King, as, as Creator of heaven and earth, and then we can walk um, in faith in response to that, that we are children of God, that we are in Christ Jesus, that when we face trials and situations that we have a, the power of God that gives us the authority to walk in certain ways. And so today, we're going to look at Psalm 16, which is uh, which David comes to that realization. King David realizes who God is in his life, and this psalm is a response to that. It's, it's a psalm of confidence in the Lord, that as believers, uh, we can have confidence in our God. Our God will never, ever lie to us. He will always do what his word says. His promises for us are always yes and amen. Now there's an enemy that tries to sow doubt into our head, try to cause us to despair, but we can have confidence in who God is. God is always who he says he is. He doesn't change. He's the God of our salvation. And he will always be that. He's the Lord, our protector, our provider. He's our shepherd. He will always be that until the end. He will never ever lie to us and he will never change. He's the same God yesterday, today, and forever. So amen to that, right? And he's that in our lives. So with David, we can have confidence in the Lord. And so David writes Psalm 16. He says this, protect me or, or watch over me or take care of me. Who? God. He's talking to God, this relational aspect of God. He says, God, watch over my life. Take care of me and protect me God, why? Because I take refuge in you. I run to you. I, I put my trust in you and you're the one who keeps me safe. You are the one who lifts my head. You are the one who watches over me. I run to you because that's our relationship. You watch over me and I run to you in the times of trouble and distress. Can we say that about ourselves, right? Can we say, God, protect me because I run to you. You are my refuge. You are my strong tower. You are my place of security and rest in the times of chaos and trouble. He says, Lord, I take refuge in you. Not in other things, just so you know. He doesn't turn to uh, the best self-help books or the best psychiatrists or the best uh, opinions of people. He turns to the Lord God because why? It goes back to this. He has confidence in who God is. He says, I said to the Lord, that word Lord that he says, I say to Yahweh, the covenant keeping God, the God of promise. That's what he's saying. I say to Yahweh, that God, the God who made his promises to his people and keeps him, the covenant keeping God. He says, I say to Yahweh, you are my Lord. You are my Adonai. He says, I say to the Lord, the God of covenant, to that you are my master. You are my um, ruler. You are the authority over my life. You are the authority of my life. You are the covering of which I am under. You are my shepherd. And I follow you because you are my Lord. You are my ruler. You have the authority to speak in my life. He says, I have nothing good besides you, meaning every good and perfect gift that is in my life is because of you and because of my, if you're the position in, that you have in my life, because you are my God, because you are my refuge, because you are the authority over my life. Every good thing I have comes from you, the Father above. James would say that same thing, and we say it with him, right? Every good and perfect gift comes from the Father above. As for the holy people who are in the land, they are the noble ones. They are the righteous ones, right? All my delight is in them. And then he goes this, on to say this, right? right? All, the, all delight flows from the people of God because they know who God is, and they live in response to that. They have security in who God is. They have provision because of who God is. They have blessing because of who God is. All That's... that's what they are and that's who they are and that's what they receive from the Lord and then he goes on to say the sorrows of those who take another God for themselves will multiply right there's nothing good outside of God when you pursue the things of this world sorrow upon sorrow continues and you get the world results it just continues to multiply and he says I will not pour out their drink offerings of blood 
I will not speak their names on my lips. He says, I'm not going to do what everybody else does. I'm not going to pursue the things, the philosophies, the gender ide ideologies, uh, the political structures of this world. I'm not going to go down those roads because I'm going to keep pure. I'm going to stay with the noble ones who are a delight to this world. I'm going to stay with the ones who believe in God and confess him as Lord and Savior and live such. He says, I'm going to do that. I'm going to stay away from all the corruption and all those, all the things that people tell me I need to do because my trust is in God. And he says, this. He says, Lord, you are my portion. He's saying, you're my inheritance. He says, Yahweh, that's the personal name of God. You covenant keeping God. He says, you are my portion. You are my spiritual possession. You are my blessing. He says, this, and my, and my cup of blessing. It's all from God. You hold my future. Right? Jer Jeremiah 29 11 says this, the Lord declares, he says, I know the plans I have for you, plans to prosper you, plans for your well-being of a hope and a future. He says, Lord, you hold my future and I can trust you with that because I have confidence in you because you keep your promises. That's your very name, your Yahweh, which is the covenant keeping God. I know who you are and therefore I trust you and you hold my future and I can rest at ease. I have peace. He says, the boundary lines have fallen for me in pleasant places. Indeed, I have a beautiful inheritance. A beautiful inheritance is a delightful, it's, it's pleasing, and it causes enjoyment in our life. That's what he's saying there. Because I trust in you, I have a beautiful inheritance that, has, that has, brings me pleasure in my life, enjoyment. He says this, because of this, because he, he has confidence in the Lord, it leads him to praise and worship God. He says, I will bless the Lord who counsels me. Right? He gives advice to us on how to live, how to walk in blessing. God gives advice. He actually gives us a counselor. Jesus says the counselor will come, the Holy Spirit, and he will guide you in all truth. Right? We walk in it because we have the very Spirit of God inside of us. David is writing this in the Old Testament. right? And we have the Spirit inside of us. He says, you guide us, you counsel us. Even at night when my thoughts trouble me, right? there's not any time where we cannot seek the presence of God, seek the counsel of God, and he will not speak to us at all times, in all circumstances circumstances when we have confidence in him we walk in assurance of that and we turn to the Lord who is our refuge we turn to the Lord and we take refuge in him at all times he says I will always let the Lord guide me right Psalm 119 105 it says your word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path it guides me on the paths of righteousness it keeps me from falling and being tripped up and falling into the pit of despair and destruction you God your word guides me I will always let the Lord guide me. Why would I not do that? He's a wonderful counselor. It's foolish to turn to other things and expect to get the results that God promises, the blessing, the hope in the future. It's foolish to turn to other gods because as we know, right, when you turn to other gods, the sorrows multiply. When you seek other things besides God, it just leads to sorrow that multiplies and multiplies and multiplies. It doesn't stop. I will always let the Lord guide me. Why? Because he is my right hand. And what that means right there, he's the one who gives me strength. He strengthens me. Paul says, therefore, stand in his great might, his strength, the power of God upon your life. Stand in that. And then you can overcome the lies of the enemy. Resist the devil and he will flee when you submit yourself to the authority of God, when you have confidence in who God is and the good things he has for your life. It's easy to bow before him and worship him and say, God, you have my life because I can trust you because you have what's good and what's perfect for me. And you don't have to look far for that either. Just look to the cross. When you doubt God's goodness or if you question whether he can sustain you, look to the cross where he sent Jesus Christ to die for your sins while we were still enemies. While we were unrighteous, God displayed his love. And it's the same yesterday, today, and forever. He says, I will let you guide me. He says, I will bless you because you counsel me even at night. I will always let the Lord guide me because he is my right hand. He is my strength. He says, I will not be shaken. I will not be caused to fall. That's what that means. To be shaken is to become weary and weak due to outside circumstances that causes you to fall. He says, I won't be, I won't, I won't fall. I won't even be shaken to cause to fall because God is my strength. He says, therefore, because of all this, guess what? My heart is glad. My heart is glad. It rejoices. It's like a spring that, bells, that, that rolls up because of my confidence in who God is. And I take refuge in him. And every good and perfect gift comes from him in my life. I am glad of heart. My inner being. He goes on to say this. My whole being rejoices. I can't even keep it in because I'm so blessed. He says, and my body rests securely. I have peace. 
You need peace in your life? Remember who God is. Remember God's word. Read this. See who God is. And it will be, it will be peace in your heart and in your body and in your mind and in your soul. It brings peace that passes understanding. Right? Solomon kind of builds up. He says, trust in the Lord. Why can you trust in the Lord? Because you can have confidence in who God is. If you trust in the Lord with all your heart, lean not on your, on your own understandings. In all your ways, acknowledge him. And he will make straight your path. And you will have peace that passes all understanding because you can cast your cares on a God who you have confidence in. It says that, it says, cast your cares upon him because he cares for you. It says, make your request known to God and the peace of God will, that passes all understanding will guard your hearts and minds as you grow in Christ Jesus. That's what, that's what he's speaking here. David is speaking that in his own life. My body rests securely because I trust you. Why? Because God, you will not abandon me to Sheol, to the grave. You will not allow your faithful one to see decay. You reveal the path of life to me. God's not trying to hide it from us. He's trying to reveal it to us. This word is revelation of God, his promises, his salvation. This is, this is the word. The word is revelation. Jesus is the manifestation of God. He reveals the character of God to us. God is revealing it to us. He's not trying to hide it. He's not trying to make you try to dig for like a buried treasure. He makes it plain and clear. We can open the word of God and read the promises of God. And he says this, you reveal the path of life to me. In your presence is abundant joy and at your right hand are eternal pleasures. God is good, God loves you, and God has a wonderful plan for your life and you can trust the promises of God for you. Be encouraged, be blessed, seek the Lord, and you will find this to be true for your life. And just like David, you will begin to worship God because he is so good, he is so loving. You can have confidence in him. He's your refuge. Every blessing comes for you and he guides your life. God bless you.